welcome to this week's edition of Chesapeake Weekly. The Deep Creek Bridge replacement project is still on the horizon. Residents learned the latest on the project at an information meeting hosted by the Army Corps of Engineers last week. Uh, hand in hand with the city of Chesapeake, we're talking to uh, the public and we're talking about really where we stand in, in the project. And I know there's a lot of frustration out there uh, within the public, which, uh, and I will tell you, I share the frustration. My staff is frustrated, the city of Chesapeake uh, staff is frustrated. Um, uh, but the good news, again, I, I, I've, I'm fully confident the bridge is going to be built. Uh, we're still resolving three critical issues. One is the real estate, uh, which I'll uh, talk in detail. The second is funding. We did uh, additional funding for the bridge because uh, we got a revised uh, uh, project cost estimate. And lastly, utility relocations that must occur uh, before our construction uh, can start. You can stay up to date on the project as it continues to move forward by visiting its webpage at cityofchesapeake.net slash Deep Creek Bridge. Nearly 500 people were at the conference center last week for the first ever Chesapeake Forum. This new program is bringing educational and inspirational speakers to our city. And first up was award-winning journalist Jane Pauley. Before the official I, I event began, really Polly sat down hobbies. with a group of high school journalism students to answer questions and offer her mentorship. I wanted to come because I knew it was going to be an amazing experience, an opportunity for me to jumpstart my journalism career or just like interview the famous Jane Polly. so I had to make it. I got that I should be more of myself and not yeah, it's going to be hard sometimes, but you have to be confident in who you are and definitely appreciate your gift because it's not Everyone can't do what we do, so definitely, yeah. Have you? You've missed 5,000 of them already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll go ahead and start out. So, you know, as a becoming a journalist, I always felt things had to be in order. You had to know what you were going to do story by story. But after listening to Miss Polly just talk, talking about how she wasn't sure what to do, how she felt more of an interview viewer, it kind of it shed a new light on what it meant to be a journalist because you're not getting just fact after fact and providing a story you're providing something that will change someone's view so i believe i'm much more relaxed now more more open to the idea than for what she gave me one of the things that i i don't really think i have a lot of advice to give their generation i was blown away by the way with um, how smart uh, the difference is they're going to practice their careers entirely in the 21st century. I feel like, you know, I'm at best an ambassador from the 20th century. I'm a throwback. They're going to have to really uh, reinvent uh, what the practice of journalism means. The one thing that I would tell them, I think it's more important than ever uh, that they be literate. Uh, because if you only have a small chunk of words before you potentially lose the attention of your audience to all the other incoming, all the other choices, you'd better choose the right words. I have the luxury when I do an interview of going on and on and on, like I'm doing now. Um, they won't have that. So, uh, but they're very, very bright and uh, uh, I feel I feel good. I don't know if they're going to stay in town or leave, but I, I hope they leave because they're, they've got talent. Well, you know, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting and exciting adventure for us as a city because we're kind of taking it to a new level with this Chesapeake Forum. Uh, we've been obviously a, a city of, of people who look within ourselves and so this forum will give us an opportunity to look beyond and I think uh, explore ideas and uh, thoughts that maybe we haven't seen in a while. But you know what, I, I, I rarely get a chance to see a, a live audience and uh, the, the, the feedback you don't, you only get that in a live audience. Sunday morning, I know there are people in the camera, but I love the exchange. And I just decided today, and primarily because I felt a uh, confidence that this particular audience, this part of the country, this size of audience was gonna be uh, generous. And that they allow me uh, to tell them some stories, to lose my way, find it back, 
end up somewhere I didn't intend to go. We'll all be surprised. It's not going to be a, a, a perfectly choreographed, and it's not going to be the speech I intended to deliver when I got on the plane this morning. Um, and I, and it's because I, I see these people. I see people that I know I can do that. That was such a cool opportunity. She was truly an incredible way to start off the Chesapeake Forum. The series continues on March 3rd with former NASA astronaut Mae Jemison, the first woman of color in the world to go into space. Get your tickets now at thechesapeakeforum.org. Uh, Drive Safe area. Hampton Roads recently honored people from around the region who are dedicated to improving traffic safety. The John T. Hanna Award Ceremony featured two winners from Chesapeake. One was Officer Ken Bird from the Police Department. Take a look. So impaired driving uh, is one of the categories that Drive Safe does, does look for. Um, I really think that, you know, they, they look for somebody who contributes to a good cause, who, who goes out there and um, not only takes the impaired drivers off the roadway, but tries to go beyond and, and educate, whether it be other officers to better get impaired drivers off the roadway or uh, juveniles in high schools as a part of a driver's ed program uh, or even just teaching and talking to civilians at like civic league meetings and stuff um, trying to really hammer home how easy it is to get to a point oh eight which is that legal you know that legal limit it, it is so easy to get there we promote traffic safety in the Tampton Roads area and we want to spread the information out in different forms working with different groups and promote it um, what they're doing in the community and help them out and then they <clears throat> help us out um, by promoting some of our um, concerns and we try to organize those concerns into an activity, an event. Um, for example, we go out to um, the Chesapeake uh, Jubilee and we run a table for people that don't want to uh, drink alcohol, we right. give them a stamp and they get a free Coke or a different type of beverage. And the second honoree was our very own Richard Hutt, who accepted the award on behalf of the rest of the team here at Chesapeake Television for the Every 15 Minutes program, the annual anti-drunk driving show. Congratulations to all the winners. Now, Drive Safe Hampton Roads is also hosting their annual car seat roundup event throughout the month of February. If you have a car seat that is older than eight years, from a thrift store or yard sale or was involved in an accident, it's time to turn it in. Bring it to any AAA Tidewater branch and receive a $5 reward. For more information, visit drivesafehr.org. February is Black History Month and Chesapeake has a variety of ways to honor and celebrate. The library is of course the hub of all things educational. Here's Chesapeake Public Library Director Amanda Jackson with more on what they have planned for Black History Month. We have a lot of things going on at the Chesapeake Public Libraries for Black History Month. Basically something every day at all of our locations. What you can expect to enjoy, we've got author visits. We also have the day program that's going to be coming in teaching us how to do West African drumming. We have a Let Your Light Shine with one of our children's librarians who will be traveling to all of our locations doing a celebration of heritage through story times and crafts. And of course we have all of our wonderful resources that we have every day of the year. And now it's time for the February edition of Peak Events. Get an up-close look at our, the heart of our solar system, the sun, on Saturday Sundays. The Back Bay Astronomers will help you safely view the sun at Elizabeth River Park this Saturday, February 8th from 10 to 1. Enjoy a Valentine's Day wine tasting while supporting the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways History Foundation. The event takes place on Valentine's Day, Friday, February 14th at 6.30 p.m. at the New Museum, 1775 Historic Way. Get your tickets and learn more about the event at gbbattlefield.org. The Great Backyard Bird Count Walk is coming up on Saturday, February 15th. The worldwide effort to identify the distribution of birds takes place every February. Meet at the Great Bridge Lock Park at 10 a.m. and bring your own binoculars. The monthly Sky Watch at Northwest River Park event is coming up on Saturday, February 18th from 5 to 11 p.m. It's a great opportunity for aspiring astronomers to explore the night sky with the help of the Back Bay Amateur Astronomers. See planets, star clusters, nebula, and galaxies. 
You'll also get a quick 101 and how to use a telescope. The event is weather dependent, so call 421-7151 to confirm that it's taking place. Join the Chesapeake Master Gardeners to learn all about bees and to build your own Mason Bee House on Saturday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. Included in the $5 class fee is all your supplies, plus invaluable information from the experts. The class takes place at the Agricultural Extension Trailer on the corner of Holt Drive and Shea Drive, right in the Municipal Center. For more information, visit cmgv.org. And finally, the annual State of the City Address, brought to you by the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce, will feature the Honorable Mayor Rick West on Friday, February 28th, from noon to 2 at the Chesapeake Conference Center. Tickets to the luncheon are $60 for chamber members, $80 for others. Now, if you can't make it to the event, Chesapeake Television will be there to bring it to you live, as well as in replays throughout the month. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Chesapeake Weekly. We'll see you next week.